the bell icon to turn on notifications. We've made the files the instructor uses in this tutorial available for free. Just click the link below in the video details to get these. Hello everyone, this is Deb and welcome back to our course on Word 2019 Advanced. We're now down into section two and in this section we're going to be covering some essential skills that you should have when you're working in Word 2019. Now I know that this is an advanced course and we will be working through some of the advanced features of Word but it's really important that we just solidify the skills that we have in Word, make sure that we know those essentials, those basics, in order to give ourselves a good foundation in which to progress on from. And what I hope to show you in this particular section is some of the things that you need to have turned on, some of the things that you need to know how to access or implement in Word in order to be able to achieve some of those more advanced skills. And even if you are aware of some of these things that I'm going to show you in this section, hopefully you'll pick up some extra tips and tricks which will help you work in Word more efficiently. Because that's what we're really aiming for here. We all work in a very time-pressed environment, at least most of us do, where we want to be able to use Word in the most efficient way possible in order to get our tasks done. And that really leads on to what I want to start out in this module with, and that is talking a little bit about the ribbon, screen tips, and those all important keyboard shortcuts. So let's start out with the latter. Let's talk about keyboard shortcuts. Now, keyboard shortcuts are a great way to increase your efficiency when you're working in Word, whether you're just trying to open files, move around a document, or invoke certain commands or dialog boxes. They're just a quick way of doing that so that your hands don't have to leave the keyboard. And you might think, well, you know, I don't mind using my mouse. And that is entirely up to you. If you're really comfortable using your mouse to do things, then that's absolutely fine. But you probably would be surprised how much quicker it is if you're already typing, if you already have your hands on the keyboard. It's a lot easier just to invoke a quick keyboard shortcut as opposed to moving your hands to your mouse and then trying to carry out whatever task you're trying to do. So we're going to start out by looking at some of those key keyboard shortcuts. Now, there are so many keyboard shortcuts in Word, and if you're anything like me, you won't memorize them all. There are hundreds of them, but you will pick up a few along the way, which you'll find yourself using all the time. So let's start out by taking a look at a few of them, and then I'm going to show you where you can access the entire list, which you can then print off if you want to and utilize the ones you need. So currently on the screen, I just have Word open. I don't currently have a document open. So let's start out by doing that. If I press the keyboard shortcut, Control N, that's going to give me a new blank document. If I wanted to open an existing document, Control O is gonna take me into that open screen in the backstage area, and I can then go in and choose to open one of my recent documents. Alternatively, I can browse for a document to open. Now, I'm not going to do that. I'm happy with my blank document. So if I want to go back to my blank document, I can click the back arrow up here. Alternatively, the shortcut for that is the escape key. So I've got my blank document and let's just get some text in here. Now, I'm not too concerned about what this text is at this stage, but this is another useful little tip. If you ever want some junk text, just some random text in a document, Sometimes if you want to maybe play around with layouts or try out some things, you don't really want to do it on an actual document. It's quite nice just to be able to quickly get some lines of text in your document so that you can do that. So a quick tip is you can type in equals rand, which stands for random, open a bracket and then define how many paragraphs you want and how many lines within that paragraph. So I'm gonna say I want 40 paragraphs of six lines each, close my bracket, looks very much like an Excel command, hit enter, and that is exactly what I get. Now you can see it's jumped me all the way down to the bottom of my document. So if I want to jump back up to the top, a keyboard shortcut I can use is Control Home to get me all the way back up there. And you can probably guess what's coming next, Control End key is gonna jump me to the bottom. So this is essentially random text that I have in my document. I'm gonna show you another way to enter random text. So what I want to do is I want to essentially undo what I've just done. 
So we have a keyboard shortcut for that, and it is Control Z. And I'm going to Control Z again and again to get rid of that little piece of code. So the other way I can enter random text is type in equals Lauren and then do exactly the same thing. This time I'm going to have 20 paragraphs of 10 lines each. Hit enter and I get that Lorem Ipsum test text. Control home to jump me up to the top of the document. Now when it comes to navigating efficiently around your document, again, there are a few different keyboard shortcuts that you can use. Now, you're probably already aware that you can use your left, right, up and down arrows to move across one character. But if you just add in the control key, so I'm going to do control key and right arrow, that's going to jump me to each new word. And I can use the left arrow to go back again. If I do control shift right arrow, it's going to highlight those words as I go across. Left arrow it's going to unhighlight them or deselect them. And if I hold down control and do my down arrow, that's going to jump me to the next paragraph and the up arrow will jump me to the paragraph above. Now, when it comes to making selections, again, there's a few important keyboard shortcuts that you should know. We've just seen one of them. We can select an entire word simply by doing control, shift, right arrow, and I can carry on doing that to select each word. And if I want to select the entire line, I just need to do shift and end to select that line. I could then move down by doing shift down arrow to carry on selecting lines like so. And of course, shift up arrow does the opposite. If I do shift home, it's going to deselect. And of course, a really important keyboard shortcut, if you just want to select everything in your document, control A will select all. So some really important keyboard shortcuts there, by no means all of them, but some ones that I personally use frequently. Let's now jump into our document and add a quick title. So we're just going to call this Lorem Ipsum. Now, I want to make this title stand out a little bit. So, of course, we have keyboard shortcuts for some of our font formatting as well. So I'm clicked at the end of the title at the moment. So if I do Control Shift Home, it's going to select the entire title. And then if I want to make that bold, Control B is going to give me bold. Control I is going to make that italic. And if I wanted to apply an underline as well, Control U is going to give me an underline. Now, if I decided at this stage I wanted to do some more advanced font formatting, I might want to jump into the font formatting dialog box. And again, there is a quick way to do that. If we do Control D, that's going to jump us straight into that font formatting dialog box. So it might be that I want to come in here and maybe change the underline style to double underline. Click on OK. And there we go. And if at this stage I want to do something like increase the font size, if I hold down Control, Shift, and then use my angle bracket, or what you might know as the greater than sign on your keyboard, I can increase my font size. And if I use the other angle bracket or the less than symbol on the keyboard, and that will take that font size back down again. Now, at this stage, I'm currently working in an unsaved document. So you can see at the top in the title bar, it says document four, which tells me that I haven't yet saved this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this to a folder that I have on my PC. And a quick way to jump into that save as dialog box is to press the F12 key. And that's going to pop up my local folders. So I'm just going to select a folder to save this into. And we're going to select the section two folder. I'm happy with the name lorem ipsum docx. I'm going to click save. And there we go. We now have a saved document. Now, as I said, those are just a few of the keyboard shortcuts that are available in Word. But if you do want to see a full list of them, you can do that very simply from within Word. So right at the top here where we have this search bar, if we click in here and type in keyboard shortcuts, you can see just here we have 10 results in the help section within Word. So if I click on this, it's going to open up a pane on the right hand side, which is essentially going to jump me into Word's help facility. And you'll see here all of the matches that we have for keyboard shortcuts. So lots of information in here. 
But if you purely just want a list so you can see all of the keyboard shortcuts available, it's this top link that you're going to want, keyboard shortcuts in Word. And here we go. Now this is a pane that you can pop out. If I just grab the top and just drag it, I can then make this as big as I want to make it easier for me to read. And it's going to go through all of the different keyboard shortcuts organized into helpful topics. So you can see here at the top, it says frequently used shortcuts. If I click on this, it's going to show me all of those keyboard shortcuts available to open a document, create a new document, save, so on and so forth. So this might be something that you want to print out, or it just might be something that you want to refer to from time to time, but really useful to know where to access that information. Now it's also worth noting that you can customize keyboard shortcuts. So if you want to essentially assign your own shortcuts to certain things in Word, then you can definitely do that as well. If we jump up to the file menu, and we're in the backstage now, so we're gonna go down to options right at the bottom, and you'll find your keyboard shortcut customization options underneath Customize Ribbon. And right at the bottom here where it says Keyboard Shortcuts, we have a Customize button. And we can now go in and look through the different categories and the different commands and set up our own keyboard shortcuts. So what you'll see is that for some of these, there are already keyboard shortcuts. So for example, if I click on File Open, you can see that we have these two current keyboard shortcuts assigned. Now I could go in and change that or add another one if I wanted to, but just be aware of this when you are setting your keyboard shortcuts. So let's quickly add in a new keyboard shortcut. I'm gonna scroll down and let's say for File Close. Now I'm gonna add a new keyboard shortcut and this is gonna be Control Shift Y. Now I can see underneath that this isn't currently assigned to anything, and that is exactly what I'm looking for. What you need to be careful of is using shortcut keys that are already assigned to other things. So you want to make sure it says unassigned under here. And when you're happy with it, you can click on assign and close and click on OK. And now let's test to see if this works. I'm going to close this document down, Control Shift Y, and there we go. If I want to reopen the document, I can do Control O, and there it is at the top of my list. Now Word is also quite helpful. It does show you what the keyboard shortcuts are for each command when you hover over them. And we're now moving into talking about screen tips, and that is exactly where we're gonna pick up in the next module, so please join me for that. If you're not a subscriber, Click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get the files the instructor used in this tutorial and follow along, click over there. And click over there to watch more videos on YouTube from Simon Says It.